Good evening, I'm Dr. Greenbrier Almond, and thank you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Each week on Channel 3, I'm happy to talk about this interface between Christianity and medicine. And tonight, I'm going to be talking about uh, something very exciting that I've been seeing happening here at Buckhannon Upshur High School, particularly this past week. Uh, we speak often of American exceptionalism as a trait uh, where we have um, the spirit of God within us, we have the spirit of creativity, we have the hard work and drive, and, and then we have the American know-how and everything coming together uh, to be very creative and uh, to, uh, to make wonderful things. And uh, this week has been uh, a week when I think I can see in a prophetic way that our nation is okay. I heard our principal, uh, Mr. Wilmoth, up at the high school today say that the future is in good hands uh, with the students that are coming up. And in particular, he was speaking to the ones that are being inducted into the National Honor Society. And uh, last week, I had an opportunity to go to, up to the high school in the evening and see an art show. Again, there's a National Art Honor Society. And I have a painting here, or actually a, a, a photo, uh, that I fell in love with, and uh, I want to focus on it here a little bit because, and tell you why it became so important for me uh, as a um, um, grandfather now in one instance, but also be just because of the creativity. And I want to salute uh, the artist uh, Brittany Walgerman. Uh, Brittany uh, uh, painted this, and I'm not sure everything that she saw here, but maybe I'll talk to her someday about it. Uh, but it was uh, up for silent auction. I bid, and lo and behold, uh, I have a gift for my granddaughter, Eliza. Uh, and let me explain a little bit about what I see here. <clears throat> and again, maybe uh, tie this into American exceptionalism and uh, creativity. Uh, I want to go to the Psalms, uh, the 96th Psalm, where uh, my granddaughter's name is mentioned, uh, Eliza. Eliza is a very particular form of rejoicing. It's called exalted rejoicing. And, and in particular, the line uh, lifted from the scripture is, let the field be joyful and all that is therein, then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. And if you look at this painting or this uh, photography, you see that this is a winter branch, a branch of a tree. and. Uh, the snow is on the uh, branch, and it's one of those uh, frosty, uh, pure days. Uh, there's something special about the whiteness and the purity of a new fallen snow, and uh, there's something special about it when it clings to branches like this. But uh, Brittany's captured something else here. The sun is behind this, and, uh, and there is a pink tone to the whole photo. Uh, and I, th I think that's a particular form of rejoicing to me. Uh, we speak of uh, red as a color of passion and pink as a color. Again, I have a little granddaughter. Um, uh, not that pink has to be for females, but, but it often is. And, uh, but it's a, it's a reminder. I see a lot of things in this uh, photo. Let me, let me just recall some verses of the uh, psalm so you understand my feeling as a, a grandfather, I'm sure, but uh, also, I think, appreciating this photo. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. And uh, I'm sure that um, a photographer taking a picture like this uh, looks for the picture day by day. Uh, I remember a particular time in my life when I was wanting to capture my own mother's uh, passion for c photography. And uh, after she had passed away, I walked to her grave. It was about a two-mile walk, and I walked every day for a year. I allowed myself to take one picture every day. Not only I, because I'm Scotch in background, I didn't want to use up film and all this, but I wanted to, to get the essence of, of what, was the, what was my feeling that day and what was I trying to uh, experience as I worked through my own grief and also as I recognized my mother would, would love the beauty of the earth and the flowers and the trees and, and a scene like this, uh, a winter scene with snow on a bough. Uh, so, so showing forth God's presence day by day. 
Declare his glory among the heavens, his wonders among all the people. When someone is creative, and, and, and there were many, many other uh, art um, exhibits that night, uh, last Wednesday night, of the Buckhannon Upshur High School National Art, art, National art, art Society, uh, and their exhibit. But, but this one, again, captured my, um, my imagination. But, but creati creativity comes out in different ways in many people, and, uh, and, and we can wonder about it. it it's it's uh, full of glory, full of wonder. And again, the scripture, David is writing, For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. There is something even fearful when you see a winter scene, too. Uh, and I think this captured here. Uh, the, the, the bow of the tree is very, very dark. Black, actually. And, uh, and that, that's, a, that's a warning, isn't it? Uh, it's very cold. It's, um, maybe the, the life of the, of the tree is down in the earth. And uh, the sap is going to be coming soon as, as the, the spring comes. Uh, but, but the uh, tree, for all intents and purposes, is dead. My wife is, is Filipino, and she came uh, from the Philippines here and could not understand all the dead trees that we had in our woods. Uh, because in the Philippines, everything is green all year round. It's a different, it's a tropical environment. But we have a good representation here, a very black limb. And then for all the Lord, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. <coughs> for me, many times walking outside is a sanctuary. I, and even, even the uh, sanctuaries uh, that we have, our churches often you know, uh, rise up and have big pillars and they look like trees. They look like walking through a forest. And, and that was what the uh, early uh, uh, people who built the cathedrals was trying to get at, uh, a forest-type feeling. But a sanctuary is a thing of beauty, and, and, uh, and getting out of doors on a winter day is, is beautiful. Uh, give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. I come back to the sun in this picture. Uh, the sun is an example, of course, of glory. Uh, glory shining around us, um, and um, the sun is all-powerful. Of course, it's, it's a one of billions of stars, isn't it, in the skies, and, and uh, we have a, a God who created a universe uh, we can only wonder about, but we know there's glory, there's strength there. Give unto the Lord the glory due His name, bring an offering, and come into His courts. <clears throat> Again, when we uh, create something, as, as I saw the uh, artist uh, Buck Ken Upshur doing last week, uh, it's an offering, isn't it? Uh, we're offering up to, um, to, to our viewing public, uh, to our parents, uh, to um, people like myself who go and appreciate the art. They're offering something to us from their heart, from their soul. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Fear before Him all the earth. Beauty of His Holiness. Again, I, I, I see that in a cold winter day. Um, the, the holiness is, is the snow falling, covering over everything that's dirty and, and, um, and troubled, and, and uh, there's nothing like it, is there, um, uh, a, a snowfall on a, on a branch. So let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea roar, let, and the fullness thereof. Uh, now, our woods are particular. I, I, um, I love that we have so much rain. We actually are a rain forest of 70 or 80 inches of rain here in Appalachia, 75% of the waters of the Mississippi. So literally, when our waters are flowing, as they have been lately with our rain and, and the snow melt, uh, then we can say that the, um, the, the sea can roar uh, from, from what is happening here in our mountains. And let the uh, field be joyful, and all that is therein, then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. Eliza, trees rejoicing. Again, you see why I love this uh, photography, uh, by, this photo by Brittany Walgerman, and I appreciate uh, what she's done uh, for us uh, as an artist, and as well as the other artists there at uh, Buckhand Upshur High School at the BUHS National Art Honor Society uh, art exhibit last week. 
<clears throat> I want to continue, though, and talk a little bit about another part of what was happening at Buckhannon Upshur High School this week. In fact, on Tuesday, the 13th of March, we had the induction for the uh, Buckhannon Upshur uh, chapter of the National Honor Society. And uh, I, I want to tell uh, four stories that came to my mind uh, as I looked back over 47 years since I became an inductee of the National Honor Society. A lot can happen in 47 years, but I, 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 I remember their motto, uh, Nobilis Oblige, uh, and uh, the, the translation of that is, those inducted into the National Honor Society have the obligation to behave honorably, generously, and responsibly for others. Uh, the idea of American exceptionalism uh, came to mind as I listened to um, what the students were saying as they uh, inducted new members, uh, what Mr. Wilmoth, the principal, said, and others. Uh, and I want to share with you four stories that, that came to mind uh, um, today. One is from my grandfather, Almond, um, <clears throat> and granddad lived in New Jersey. Uh, I remember him as, as uh, having a uh, machine shop. It was a large um, uh, concrete block uh, stone building, uh, not painted, um, a simple structure uh, filled with tools. He had, oh, I'd, uh, just, just uh, like, like a gymnasium-sized building filled with tools. It was an amazing place, and all sorts of nuts and bolts and, and uh, things uh, that he would need as a machinist. And I asked Granddad, I said, what do you do? I mean, you know, because I was curious as a little boy visiting him. And he said, well, I, I repair things, I make things, I create things. Um, and, and I have to use my imagination. I have to uh, make something work uh, that, that uh, is broken. <clears throat> and I, of course, I didn't quite understand. But one Christmas, I came to understand. Uh, Granddad was called upon to, to repair a chocolate factory. Uh, where they were manufacturing and processing chocolate, vats of chocolate, and, and they had to get ready for Christmas, of course, and all the, the market, and, uh, <clears throat> and the machinery was broken, <coughs> which was horrible. And, of course, they called upon Granddad Almond as a machinist, and he came and he studied uh, all the equipment and looked around and found that there were some nuts missing and, and uh, needed some washers, and they needed this and they needed that, and he repaired it. And, of course, they were so grateful to him that they, they gave him a huge block of chocolate, and he sent it to us. He said, Greenbrier, this is what I do. Uh, and, and, uh, and it was about a 40-pound uh, uh, block of chocolate. And you can imagine, I was in my glory. You know, speaking of glory and honor and uh, the majesty of God, as we talk about with uh, this uh, photo, but, but uh, that block of chocolate gave me an idea of what my grandfather did. And I was very proud of him. American exceptionalism, uh, can do, uh, able to make things happen. And I, I could appreciate that in Granddad. Um, later on, um, I, I had a, a chance to see my father in action. And uh, my, my dad um, was an exceptional doctor. And, I, and everyone still tells me this today. And I'm very happy uh, when, when people remind me of, of how he saved lives and how he worked with his patients. And, uh, and, it, and it would be, uh, it, it, if they didn't, they maybe didn't have the National Honor Society when he was in high school, but uh, this noblesse oblige, uh, he, would, he would agree with that, and he would, he would live that way, an obligation to behave honorably, generously, and responsibly for others. But one day, um, the story I want to remind you of today is uh, he was um, in his office, and, um, and uh, there was a uh, lady apparently driving from Weston, uh, to Buchanan, and, um, and uh, as she was driving along, she realized she had a spider in her car. And uh, lo and behold, uh, the spider bit her. Of course, it frightened her terribly. Uh, she didn't know what to do. Uh, upon coming to Buchanan, then she, she asked where the doctor's office was, and, and they direct, someone directed her to my father's office. And uh, he realized that this was a crisis. This was a poisoning. This, this, uh, uh, it was a, and, and we looked around the car, we found it was a brown recluse spider, very poisonous spider. How did it get in her car? I don't know. But anyway, here she is already bitten, and, and Dad uh, could see that she, she was swelling up, she could hardly breathe, she was beginning to turn blue. 
uh, if we didn't do something, she would die. It was an emergency. And, and Dad uh, went into his exam room and uh, had the nurse bring uh, the lady in, and we lay her down, and uh, he started an IV. And he started calcium gluconate, and that's the antidote for brown recluse spider bite. How did Dad know? I asked him later, how do you know that, Dad? I've, I've, I've been to medical school, but uh, I don't remember that lecture. And Dad said, you don't forget some things. And, and, uh, and indeed, uh, what he knew that day uh, saved that lady's life. Uh, we didn't have time to call poison control. We didn't have time to do other things. He had to know uh, what to do uh, to save her life, and he did it. <clears throat> and I think, I think that's uh, part of, it's emblematic of the uh, motto a nobles oblige of the National Honor Society to, uh, to, we have an obligation, certainly doctors have an obligation, to behave honorably, uh, generously, and responsibly to others, and, and to be prepared. Um, um, my father also was a Boy Scout. He believed in being prepared. Uh, and, and so that's a remarkable uh, uh, side to him. And we, I, I've heard stories like this all my life, many, many other things, but I've witnessed it. I can say that. Another, another story, and I, I think uh, this is, I, I, may, I mentioned American exceptionalism, but, but uh, I think, I think uh, there are exceptionalistic uh, ideas around the world, and, and certainly here's an example from the Philippines. <clears throat> My um, father-in-law uh, was able to, um, on, on a little remote island, uh, much poorer than, than Upshur County, much poorer than, um, than West Virginia or, or America, uh, and, uh, but was able to raise eight children and then send them all to uh, professional schools. My wife becoming a doctor, uh, accountants in the, in the uh, family, nurses, uh, lawyers, uh, engineers, um, dietitians. I mean, uh, each of the, the children, eight children, uh, were able to pursue advanced education that they loved and, and, and they could do with passion. And he did that uh, from, from his uh, little island uh, about 10 miles uh, across, 30 miles long, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And uh, one of the things he did well uh, would be a fish farming. And he had to know, because there were over 200 inches of rain a year, uh, what, what uh, size spillway to make so his fish pond would not wash out when 200 inches of rainfall. And, and he had to know how thick to make the walls of the, uh, of the uh, fish pond and, and of course, uh, what kind of fish to raise, and on and on and on the details necessary. Uh, but if that's your livelihood, if your family depends on that, and you can apply yourself with excellence uh, to that task, then I think that also uh, deserves at least mention as noblesse oblige, uh, to, to do something for society, an obligation to behave honorably, generously, and responsibly for others. And I, I, there were a lot of parents there today uh, at the National Honor Society induction and grandparents. And uh, they were all proud and they, they have done their part uh, raising their kids. And again, Mr. Wilmoth, the principal, uh, asked the students to thank their, um, their parents and their grandparents for, for what they've done for them. And certainly I know the Gannons uh, are very grateful for what their father and what their mother did uh, for them uh, in a remote corner of the world uh, where um, Poverty is the rule. How how to how to have sex ex excellence that um, that the children have an opportunity to succeed. <clears throat> it's another story. Um, this is this is my story. Um, and as a doctor, after um, about forty years, uh, I you you see things that happen and you you mar you marvel and and I want to say uh, give God the glory. You know. Uh, go back to our painting, uh, the sun shining uh, on that snow, uh, that, that pink collar, the color of life, um, and, and the black limb, a uh, reminder of death. Uh, one time I was um, in, in um, the hospital. I was just uh, leaning on the um, nurse's desk at the, in the ER, uh, hanging out, uh, waiting for something to happen, and uh, maybe I'd finished rounds. I don't know exactly why I was there, but, but God had me in that place at that moment. And uh, this uh, husband and wife uh, were coming in. They had uh, driven from Pickens. Again, you know, no time to call an ambulance or anything. She was in the midst of having a stroke. 
I was blind, uh, was paralyzed on one side, could uh, not speak. Um, it was evident uh, that, that uh, if we didn't do something immediately, uh, that this, it would be a completed stroke, and then uh, perhaps she would she would die uh, if, if she couldn't swallow, if she couldn't see, she couldn't move. You know, you can. You, it's a horrible way to go. But uh, uh, many many people stroke out every year. Uh, but but uh, fortunately um, for her and and for me, I had a hand in this. But but again, God gets the glory. Um, as she came in, uh, we didn't have the uh, TPN, uh, this uh, special. Um, shot that you can give to a clot buster. Uh, all we had was uh, heparin, uh, which is an old-fashioned treatment, maybe let's say the $4 treatment. But anyway, uh, we had that. Uh, so we, we started an IV, and I began to titrate the heparin in her. Uh, it's a blood thinner. And, and, I, and I said, if we can do this, uh, we catch this uh, clot forming, we can reverse that process, and, and uh, the clot will, will dissolve, and, and then the um, the, um, the blood will flow again, and maybe we can restore circulation. If you, if you think about, go back to this uh, artwork, um, the, the tree limbs are the veins, and the, um, the snow is the flesh, uh, the muscle on the, on the, uh, on the uh, limbs, and, um, and so, so the, the circulation uh, has been blocked, uh, just as this tree is, is black. Um, there was death. There was death looming, and um, but uh, to, again, to God be the glory, the um, the clot dissolved, and and uh, she began to say, "I can see, I can speak, I can move," you know, and it was a, it was a marvelous experience, uh, and uh, I, I I remember this now not only because this is uh, the National Honor Society Day, and and I'm, I keep mentioning this noblesse oblige that. Uh, uh, doctors and, and teachers and principals and parents and grandparents and all of us uh, who are involved with our children uh, share that obligation to behave honorably, generously, and responsibly. But I had, uh, I had my chance to be there at the right place at the right time to help this lady. And um, I'm also reminded because this coming weekend actually is the, uh, the Maple Syrup Festival at Pickens. And uh, I can count on it if I go up there, which I do generally, uh, getting free um, maple syrup and pancakes, you know, uh, from a grateful family, and and that's that's okay. That's that's part of the payback uh, uh, that you get for for good service. Uh, and I want to I want to close this out tonight and say uh, use the pledge that they've used with the um, uh, National Honor Society. Uh, each of the new inductees uh, gave uh, their uh, gave this or, or said this pledge. And of course, the, the uh, members also recited it uh, as they had joined uh, last year. Uh, and the pledge goes like this. I pledge to maintain high scholastic standing. In other words, exceptionalism is doing your best every day. Uh, to study is, is, is the work of a student. Um, just as someone goes to work and uh, digs coal, they do it excellently. They, or someone doctors, they, they do it as a doctor, as a machinist, they do excellent work. As a farmer uh, raising fish, they do it excellently well uh, to maintain a high standing, to hold as fundamental and worthy uh, an untarnished character. Uh, character is what you do when no one's looking, uh, to, to be the best you can be uh, and, and to be prepared, an untarnished character. To, to endeavor intelligently and courageously to be a leader. Intelligently and courageously, I think, is, is also to be creative. Uh, like um, uh, Brittany Walgerman, uh, the uh, photographer for this print uh, that she entitles Winter. Uh, it, it's winter, it's new life, it's uh, rejoicing. It's a tree limb rejoicing. It's Eliza to me. Uh, but that's, that's creativity. Um, intelligent, courageous, um, endeavor, <coughs> and to give of myself freely in service to others. Uh, we, we are not here for ourselves. We're here to serve others. I firmly believe this, um, and I'm glad. I'm glad that the uh, National Honor Society promotes this. And so, Duane, I shall prove myself worthy of a place in the National Honor Society. Um, it was quite a day. It was quite a, um, a week uh, for Buckhead Upshur High School. 
I'm uh, pleased after a year to say that I'm uh, still pleased to be part of the Board of Education, uh, to be a member, uh, and to be part of, uh, of a team of people who, uh, as, as I hear from the military, as I work with veterans, uh, who they can say, I've got your back. Uh, we adults um, have to be creative and do excellent, exceptional work for our students. Uh, so they have the best uh, place to study, uh, the best laboratory for the teachers to help the students, and of course the best facilities. Um, uh, and this goes all the way down to the bus drivers, to the machinists, to the um, janitors, to the cooks, um, the whole team of people. Uh, so this has been a, quite a week. Uh, I, I just focus back one more time on this picture of Eliza. Eliza meaning that the trees rejoice. You can see that this is a, a, not a dead branch. Uh, this is a branch that's going to come alive, uh, that the, uh, the coating of um, snow uh, is there as a protection, uh, even as we put coats on in winter. The sun is shining and, and everything is going to break out in glory. And I appreciate again uh, Brittany Wagerman and her uh, artistic ability until the next time, this is Dr. Greenbrier Alman thanking you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. A special thanks to Channel 3 for this opportunity to come your way each week.